Hi, I'm Dave Darlington, an engineer in New York City. Today we're going to talk about the Manny American bundle. Manny American's bundle consists of six plugins, and I'd like to start with the EQ, which is an essential part of any engineer's toolbox. You can see it here on the screen. We've got four bands with fixed frequency points, cut and boost, and mute in each frequency, and then we have a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and an input and an output control. Couldn't be simpler. The great thing about this EQ is the frequency points where the EQ notches are. Obviously, Manny's a world-class engineer, and with a long career, he's had access to some of the most sought-after hardware there is on the planet. And what happens in, with engineering is you find yourself going to a certain tool for a certain job over and over again. So Manny chose particular frequencies modeled after the hardware that he goes to over and over again to do certain particular jobs. It makes it easy for you because the sweet spots are already there. You just find which sweet spot is working for the job that you're trying to do. I've got an example here written by my friend Yoni Leviathan called Days of Change. He was nice enough to let us use it for an example. Let's listen to the chorus. So as you can hear, it's quite a thick arrangement. We've got power guitars, keyboards, drums, bass, background vocals, lead vocals. So we've got to use our EQ very judiciously to sculpt things and get them out of each other's way and still maintain a certain glue and a certain power. We don't want to take the life out of anything. So let's go through a few channels, a few instruments that I've EQ'd a little bit with the Manny American plugin. And I'll show you some of the frequencies and I'll, I'll boost them a lot so you can hear where they're working and I'll show you what I've done with them. Here's the raw kick drum without any EQ. So they did a great job of miking it. It's very punchy, but you hear a little bit of the roominess and you could always enhance a little bit of the low end and a little bit of the top end. So as you can see from my frequency points, I'm boosting a little bit at 110, sucking out a great deal at 250, which is the boxy part, and I'm boosting a lot of top and at 10K to get a little bit of the attack of the beater. So let's listen to it with the kick drum, and I'll boost the frequencies extremely so you can hear where the, what they're doing. That's the bass at 110. That's the boxiness an octave a little bit more than an octave higher, which we don't want. It emphasizes the room. So we want to take some of that out, scoop the bottom, punch up that beater. Here's how it sits in the mix. These are the days of change and sorrow. So you can clearly hear the kick drum pattern and feel the weight of the kick drum through all that stuff. Very similar situation on the bass. Here's the raw electric bass. A direct signal from, an elect from a Fender bass or a Music Man bass. We're adding a little weight in the bottom, scooping out a little mid, adding some of the upper, upper mid range to get the fret and the articulation and add a great deal of air on the top to get some clicking, a very rock-oriented sound. There's the bottom. Here's what I'm taking out. We don't want that. Suck that out. Add some articulation and some frets. What I like to do is really boost the frequencies and then dial it back a little bit. These are the days of change and sorrow. Even, Even in the midst of this huge band, you can actually pick out what he's doing, but the job of the bass is still doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's really great on lead vocals. In fact, that's just one of my favorite um, applications. Here's Raw. These are the days of change and sorrow, paving the way 
just a little bit dark, a little bit boxy, and a, a big pop on the P. So as you can see here, I'm high passing everything from 127. Actually, actually 91. This is uh, sweepable. So from 91 down, just taking everything out and I'm taking even more out at 110. So taking out any kind of bass thing in the voice, which probably wouldn't be much use for us in this mix since it's got to cut through a big rock track. I'm also taking out the roominess. You can hear the vocal booth in the sound of the raw vocal. So I'm taking out 400 to get rid of that boxiness, punching up the upper mids and punching up the air. So let me exaggerate these so you can hear it. These are the days of change and sorrow. That's the bass. The way. And when I take it out. These are the days of change and sorrow. Paving the way. Now we hear the letter P, but we don't have a big thump down in the low end. Here's the upper mids. These are the days of change and sorrow. And the boxiness. These are the days of change. We don't need that. Sorrow, way. And a little bit of sibilance S and T up there. These are the days of change and sorrow. Once again, exaggerate, hear what you're doing, and then dial it back down. So the lyrics are plenty clear in spite of all those guitars and all those keyboards. It's easy to understand what he's saying. It's really dramatic on backgrounds. Let me solo my background group, play it without any EQ. It's a nice stack, but it's got a little bit of a boxiness to it, and there's not very much presence or clarity. So you can see I'm really whacking up some 12.5 in, in the air bands and some, um, some, some where it speaks at 3.2, I'm just giving it like two and a half, three. Taking out some upper boxiness, which is layers and layers of the same tenor voice, around 800, and adding a little warmth down at the bottom. So you can see the real point of the Manny American EQ is the focal points of the frequencies, the cutoffs of where the bell is. These are tried and true points that are very musical and very sought after for the, from the analog point of view, from the hardware manufacturers. There's a reason that Neve made these frequency points in those spots because they're very musical. So he's taken the guesswork out of it for you. They're already the best in the world chosen for you and you have, you have a lot of options. One last point I'd like to make is you can see that the mid-range frequencies overlap. So you can cut one area and then boost an area that's very close to it if, if that's what you need.